On the last episode, Jeff and I didn't catch a ton of fish. However, we were hooking the bushes left and right. I mean, we had quite a few takes and a few fish on. However, only netted a handful of fish, which is very uncommon for this creek. But we saw some cool sights and beautiful scenery. And we did have a few really pretty fish. Now, after going to sleep in our tents, hoping that this will be a better day, we woke up to rain, thunder, and lightning. But in the mountains here, the weather can change on you really quickly. Well, good morning, guys. So, you probably have a couple raindrops on the lens here, but uh, it was raining up until just a minute ago. But, look at this. We've got some clear skies. Let's see if I can turn that, there we go. Uh, we were a little nervous this morning when we woke up um, about two hours ago uh, to thunder and lightning and, and uh, heavy rain. We don't mind rain. Jeff and I don't mind rain. We've got rain jackets. We can fish in the rain. I don't like fishing in thunder and lightning. Um, we've got graphite rods. Actually, i got a fiberglass rod um, using a new uh, uh, Reddington butter stick, and I love it. Um, it's a great rod. But even so... All these, uh, all these rods are like lightning sticks, basically. You're, you're casting them up in the air, so it's not something that we really like doing if we don't have to. Luckily, it's slowed down a little, so hopefully today will be a lot better day than yesterday. We didn't have a lot of time. We came here late yesterday, so hopefully the morning time will be better. Um, we did get a couple, but it's just not what we're used to up in these mountain streams. Usually it's, you know, 20 fish in a day, uh, at least 5 or 10 each. But no, uh, it was it was slow. So um, today should be better. We decided to hike about four miles downstream and fish back up. However, when we got down there, we saw this little creek that was dumping into the larger creek and decided to explore it for a minute. Now there was a bit of hiking, and this water really didn't seem like it would be holding fish. But we soon realized that there was tons of fish holding in the pools. So Jeff, with the first try here, having to slingshot the line in because of the heavy brush. Well, he got hung up, so I gave it a quick shot. Okay, I got hung up there too. And the fish were spooked. Alright, let's try it for another pool like this. In order to not spook the fish, we were trying to hide behind trees and almost stalk them. Okay, this is not easy. I mean, with no back cast anywhere, and like six inch diameter safe areas to get your line into, it was making for a really tough time. But with a little persistence and patience, we were finally able to hook a fish. Jeff there with a really nice cutthroat. Wow, out of this little creek? I will say, with the water so clear, it's really hard not to spook these little guys. Okay, my turn again. So I actually threw on a small hair's ear nymph on the back of my dry fly, which ended up working. Oh no, I can't believe I dropped him. Sorry, little guy. So the fish in this hole were very spooked now, but I want to show you guys just how many were sitting under there. There were two others that were off to the side as well. So that's six fish in a small little hole that were just munching away on nymphs. All right, well, let's find some more fish, shall we? Here's one that I missed filming the hook set and fight due to trying to conserve battery. Jeff here with a strike and a miss. But he got him on swing too.
and here I had to cast over a bush, hanging in front of a big cutthroat. But that bush ended up making me lose the fish, and he was probably one of the largest cutthroat in this small creek, at least that we saw. But right away, Jeff got a fish, and a really pretty little cutthroat at that. Then I missed a strike set, but I did get the fish on the second try. Well, this was turning out to be a really good little creek with lots of beautiful native fish in it. Wow, and he swallowed my stimulator deep. Luckily though, it was barbless and easy to take out without hurting him. But fishing this small creek, while productive, was a little dangerous. I mean, slick boulders and rocks were throughout, and it seemed like we could never get a normal cast. It was over bushes, around bushes, and sometimes blind casts behind rocks. However, it was totally worth it, and there were some really nice native fish. It was only about 10.30 by the time we made it to the very back of that small creek, so we decided to hike back down and fish the three mile or so stretch of the main larger creek we fished yesterday, all the way back up to our cars. So we finally made it back down that creek, and this is us standing there figuring out where a good spot to enter the creek is. There was a good sized brookie sitting below Jeff there in a pool, and we didn't want to spook him. However, we did spook him anyway, so we just went fishing upstream. By the way, it was really nice to be able to make long distance casts again. I mean, we did have to worry a little about trees behind us, but it was really nice to be able to stretch our fly line. Oh, and I can't tell you how beautiful this creek really was. The camera is really not doing it justice. Amazing rock formations, waterfalls, and large crystal clear pools just littered this creek. Absolutely amazing. However, there were just not the same numbers of fish. But we did have other species mixed in, like this brook trout. Also, the trout were much more spunky and had room to run, so fighting them was a little more exciting. Wow, what a beautiful little cutthroat trout. Look at those spots. Boy, I can't hang on to fish today. Well, we fished that full three miles and really had only a couple of fish. I mean, that stretch was not doing great. We got back up to our cars around one o'clock and decided that we had a little more fishing in us. So we drove up river, past where the tunnel was at the end of the road for our fishing day yesterday. We did see a few fish right away, and here was a pool with about a dozen fish in it. However, I spooked them after a single miss of a hook set. Oh, and by the way, I had lost all my stimulators I was using earlier. So I switched to an Adams dry fly. It's a classic and a good imitator of mayflies, which we saw flying around. But for some reason, I was missing hook sets left and right. Not sure if it was the Adams fly I was using, or it's just that I was fatigued from a long day hiking and camping. But seriously, this pool produced like 17 strikes on my fly in less than 10 minutes, and zero fish to the net to show for it. It was quite frustrating for sure. Then it started to rain, and I also realized my misses were due to me being fatigued and nothing else. I was really starting to feel it here. But that didn't stop me from trying, and because of my persistence, I was able to bring in this amazingly beautiful brookie. I absolutely love when they're this super dark coloration. So pretty and unique. Just look at them. It's like a work of art. I mean, God's endless creativity is amazing. Finally, we were catching fish again after hiking a couple miles back into the creek. Here I am sitting down resting because I was so tired, but Jeff there was still catching fish. And some really nice ones at that. 
Well, okay, I guess he's getting fatigued as well. That hook set sent a fish flying. I mean, he felt really bad, but luckily the fish was unharmed. And after a few more mistakes from both of us, and a few more beautiful little fish, we decided to call it a day. I mean, it was only 4 o'clock and the daylight would have allowed us to fish a little while longer, but our bodies just didn't have much more in them. However, the fish that we caught and the beauty we saw was absolutely amazing. This area in the lower stretch of the Rocky Mountains, through what is commonly called the San Juan Forest, is one of my favorite areas in the world. Immense amount of beauty, clear and productive trout streams, and a lack of large crowds. I mean, you can spend a few days out here like we did, and not see a single other person. Oh, and be careful because the terrain is tough. Here I dropped my camera and it was a few inches away from falling down a cliff, never to be seen again. In fact, I slipped and fell hard and was worried about a broken bone earlier in the day. So when going out in this area, or anywhere remote, please be careful and safe. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this sort of thing, subscribe if you aren't already. Also, share with all your fish loving friends. And do me a favor and hit that like button. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.